my pleasure now to introduce Laura Tate, Venture Committee Development, and uh, we're looking with the province for about a year. And your venture career is local government. In fact, our paths across many years ago went quite well on the Pomo Creek watershed line. So, uh, Laura's presentation really is to segue into the table exercise. And uh, Laura is the author of a printed document, only about two months old, but a guide for green choices. So, on that basis, it's really important. I'll uh, see if I can do this in a way that I don't uh, obstruct your view here. First of all, I wanted to uh, thank Kim and everybody with CAVI who uh, has set up this, this group of sessions. I think it's, it's going to be a really exciting, uh, it continue to be a really ex exciting uh, program for all of you. I, I've certainly enjoyed the presentations I've heard so far. I also was very happy to be invited to speak up here because I'm just starting a new assignment, essentially working with uh, the Comox Valley Regional District, uh, providing some support to them from the ministry's perspective as uh, you work through your regional growth strategy. So this for me has been a great learning opportunity and I've been tremendously impressed with the amount of regional collaboration I'm seeing so far. Um, you know, I, I think a growth strategy is all very nice, but it doesn't mean anything unless you're starting to actually do the real work of collaborating and thinking of yourselves in a regional way. So uh, this has been very exciting for me. So my presentation today is, is, is to give you a little bit of an introduction to a document that we've, we've just published, but I think I need to give you a bit more context. We have a, a series of initiatives with the Ministry of Community Development that are integrated with some other broader provincial initiatives. Uh, and, and they're really seeking to, to help us build green communities in our province. We are all residents of this province. We all benefit from having attractive, livable communities with healthy water systems, with healthy natural environments. And we really need to look at things in an integrated way. And again, that's why I'm so thrilled with this, this session because the, the, the notion of integration, I think, is becoming more and more part of what we do. So we have four different pieces of, of the puzzle that we're trying to tackle as part of our Green Communities initiatives. One of those pieces, of course, is about partnerships. The provincial government has been doing an increasing amount of its work in partnership with other organizations, yeah. recognizing that local governments are our partners, that non-profit groups can also play an important role in, in helping achieve the, the broader vision for our province. So, so partnerships are important, and I think I could spend a whole hour just talking to you about partnerships, and I'm not going to. Legislation is also part of the, uh, the package. Uh, incentives are part of the package, and this is something you'll be hearing about probably over the next year or so. We, we are working on some, some ways of trying to encourage uh, our local government partners to, to start adopting more green standards and practices, and this will be reflected eventually. It's already starting to be a little bit now in our granting programs. So when you apply for funding for certain infrastructure projects, some of the ways that we evaluate communities involves, you know, how green are you? Uh, and this is something we're sort of, we're gradually building towards. And again, that's the subject for another presentation. What I want to speak to you about today is about better information. Because we recognize that as local governments, you are making a lot of the decisions out there that have a big impact. And what we're trying to do is provide as much information as we can um, that, that will help you with your decision-making process. Yeah, so just focusing on that better information here. So one of the things that we've been involved with, of course, has been uh, working with the Ministry of Environment in a supporting role in, in trying to <coughs> develop ways to help you measure your, your carbon emissions. And, and this is work that is ongoing, and, and I, I understand they're hoping to have some, some data released to you fairly soon. We also, uh, I, I mentioned the incentives. There will be, ideally, a rating system that, that will help communities have a better understanding of how, how we see the performance and, and how that might be linked to funding, but that's still very much in process. And also some preliminary work, just look in looking at how communities might model the greenhouse gas impacts of some of their planning work. That's, that's at a pilot project stage, but I think that's something that you can look forward to hearing more about over, over time. We also have a document that, that we've just finished creating called the Guide to Green Choices. And I just really wanted to draw your attention to this document, let you know what it's intended to do, and then encourage you to make your own investi investigation. And here's where I'm going to ask one of my colleagues from Ministry of the Environment to pass out some business cards. 
Um, I did not bring along copies of this document for you today. We have, have consciously chosen to try to reduce waste, and so we're giving you business cards with a link to the website that will allow you to download this document. But if anybody does want a copy, if they, they find it impossible to print out a copy or to, to read it online, I'm happy to mail it to you, and uh, I'll, I'll ask you to leave your name with Kim, uh, or maybe we'll get a little list going and, and we can make sure you get a copy. So what does this document do? First of all, it really is trying to encourage communities to, to work towards a vision of green. And it recognizes that you are making choices and that what's appropriate for Courtney and Comox and Cumberland may not be appropriate for Duncan, may not be appropriate for who's to pay. That, that every community still has to make their own choices. We also have recognized with this document that it's not the end of the conversation, that we need to keep having some dialogue with you, and I'll get to that at the end of my presentation. So our document has really looked at seven different issues that we think communities are going to need to come to grips with in order to become green, in order to address some of the broader livability issues and environmental values uh, that, that we collectively in our province have, have prioritized. We've set in this document some objectives that local governments might wish to consider. We've outlined some steps and strategies and then provided lots of examples because again, we think there are a lot of different ways you can pursue some of these objectives. And then finally, we've created some sample scenarios. We recognize that sometimes, you know, an idea is very nice, but how do you make it real for you? So we said, well, what if, you know, you're a small community and you're facing this situation? At first, it seems like it's really hard to make a green decision here, but what are some options that you might exercise? And this is something we'd certainly like to keep building on over time. So I'll just give you a quick, uh, quick tour of, of just a couple of pieces in the document. One of the things that we've identified as an issue that communities are having to come to grips with is how to have a green settlement pro uh, pattern. And an objective that, that we're proposing that communities consider is providing for the right development in the right place at the right time. And there, there is quite a bit of detail about what we mean by these, these phrases. And, uh, and again, there are lots of ways you can interpret this, but we have you know, provided, I think, a bit more clarity on what this, what this means. You know, so, so that's the objective. And one of the examples that we, we have used to illustrate how you might achieve the, the objective that's been set out is the notion of cluster development. So here you see a drawing where you've got you know, a very conventional subdivision pattern and the small little green pieces are pieces of natural ecosystem that have been preserved. In the bottom you see an example where you get the same number of lots, but you have, they are smaller lots and you have a considerably larger amount of green space left over with the same parcel. So that's one idea that communities might use in order to get the right development in the right place at the right time. The right development meaning it's basically a bit more compact while still providing people in this case with a single family form that they're wanting. Uh, the right place meaning that it's clustered and it allows for the preservation of habitat. There are many other ideas. This is just one example that, that I'm throwing out there for today's presentation. And then finally, the scenarios. So one of the scenarios that we've spoken to in this book is, is probably something many of you can relate to. What happens if a big box store comes to your town? Big box stores are, are very popular in, in many respects. Consumers love them. Politicians appreciate the uh, tax dollars that they bring in. How might you go about planning for a big box development in a way that's more green? Recognizing that not all big box developments are necessarily going to be green, but there are certainly some developments like this that have, have gone a long way towards addressing some of the problems this form can, can raise. So that's again an example of the kind of thing you'll find in this publication. Uh, I guess one of the issues that is very relevant to this group is the notion of integrating settlements with nature. That is, planning for um, watersheds in an integrated way. Making sure that your rainwater treatment is integrated that you're looking at how you're planning your land uses, how you are reintegrating that rainwater into the watershed. I have to confess, this is an area where I think we could really benefit from a lot more information. And I think this is something that CAVI and, and some of the discussion that you'll be having at CAVI uh, could, could, could provide some, some further information to us. We've, we've come up with some ideas and some scenarios, but I think a lot more work and information could be added here. 
So that brings me to my last point, which is that we are really looking for feedback. 